Good morning. I just woke up. I'm very tired. I have things I need to do today. I felt that now would be a good time to listen to the try not to headbang challenge. I'm going to try not to headbang, but as you've seen in many of my previous videos, roll tape, Nathan. Yeah. Okay. First up is Mega Man Collection Zero Cannonball. Okay, it's on a loop. It's gonna be a really hard challenge. Okay, that uh, woke me up, that's for sure. It's such an innate thing, you know what I mean? Like, there's something about moving to music that feels so good because it's like this sort of coalescing of, I don't know, rhythm and body energy and you, you can't help but release it. And, and that's the whole point of headbangery style music is that it's supposed to make us feel some sort of way, whether it's to be galvanized, whether it's to be energized, whether it's to be excited, enthused, uh, a fight against a, a deadly foe. This music is all intended to make us feel motivated and feel determined and to feel uh, yes I, I know i'm using motivated and no bury the light is not on here it's we've done it plenty of times we're not doing any megalovania there is something about music that's like this rhythmically that when we use short rhythms the intention is to get us amped up right so we're probably going to see that throughout all these pieces that we're not going to have a lot of slow songs it doesn't make sense let's listen to divinity original sin 2 mead gold and blood ifan's theme I, I really love this theme so this is going to be even more difficult than the last one Oh God. <laughs> that rhythm. Oh, I love the drums. I love the rhythm. Oh. No, don't move. Ah, I want to clap. I want to clap. Uh. Uh. Oh my god, I forgot. I forgot this part. Uh, oh. 
absolutely. What an amazing track. Oh my god, this is so hard. What I love about uh, Mead, Gold, and Blood here is that we use the same da 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 ya da ya da 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 right? Like, we use that throughout the whole thing. Builds and builds and builds. And what's amazing is that then we have this incredibly powerful peak of it that really is immensely exhilarating. And it really, really feels just so passionate. Buildups like this are wonderful because they make us feel really empowered and really like determined. I love too that this music expresses a feeling of immense like pride and I don't know, there's almost like some curiosity in there for me. I also love that we're using instrumentation that is very clearly medieval and that that can still elicit a response in us. It goes to show that like nothing is obsolete in music and, and certainly not in video game music. It's really interesting because people talk about, you know, classical music, it's sort of archaic or it's dying or whatever, but then you get a piece like this, which is literally made of like medieval instruments that I don't know the names of. And all of a sudden we're like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm down with that. This music elevates everything and, and and it doesn't matter if it's techno, R and B, rap, pop, punk, whatever, like there is a place for music like this. Next up is payday two, I will give you my all. drop is so good. That 
that fat drop with this um, house vibe to it is absolutely nutty. That was absolutely uh, exactly my jam. I love um, house music. Obviously, I think in context, this piece would be absolutely insane to listen to while like playing Payday 2. I really, really love how hard that went. And I also appreciate this singer is also Simon is also um, a voice actor in the game. Look at the variety here, even in the, la the first like four songs we've listened to. We went from the 90s to the medieval time period period to house music like there's it's, some, it's pretty amazing what video games can do i want to go to silver for monsters because it's one of my favorite songs and this will be very hard for me ah, already oh god i love this song I failed. There's something about this soundtrack in particular that just like blows me away. And one of the things I really love about this that we saw also in um, Ifan's theme from Divinity Original Sin 2 is this build up that then boosts us, right? So the whole time, uh, the first minute in both pieces, we have this like very obviously rhythmic piece. All these pieces have been rhythmic, but then near the middle end, it's like all that stacking. It's sort of like you open the valve and all the melody and rhythm comes spiraling out and you, you it like it builds up inside of you and you can't help but release it it's uh, you know a fantastic musical technique of getting us to be like oh oh and, and then you're just gone you know what i mean it just goes to show that there is a world where classic instrumentation really sells and you can really go in any direction in music and that the limitations that we put on ourselves in a modern time period where you know we have the radio and stuff like it's sometimes a disservice because what the music industry wants us to listen to isn't necessarily the most complex or interesting it's not to say that modern artists are bad but i find that video game music is not relegated to the same standards that like pop or or music that you hear on the radio is and so there's a lot more flexibility and a piece like this, you know, thank God it exists because it's amazing. And I think that we'll see throughout this episode that there are all these pieces are unique in their own way. I think that that's really the beauty of video game music is that it deviates from the standard tropes that we know. Let's go to uh, La Cremosa of Dana, Sunshine Coastline. Oh, I love this piece too. Already lost. Listen to that piano. Oh, that rhythm. 
Freedom. I absolutely am obsessed with that song. It's so happy. Isn't it funny how like an emotion can be baked into um, a soundscape? There's just something about that electric guitar that just sings. And I love that you don't need a singer to evoke that feel. And, and a lot of times I actually prefer when there isn't a singer because as a singer, you know, I tend to gl glom onto that. The unbridled joy in this piece of music, it's, it's incredible how important melody is to telling a story. That melody in particular for this, uh, I think sets it apart from the others and that it's like also just so joyous. I and mean, it goes to show that headbangers don't need to be full of angst. They can also, or, or violence or epicness. They can also just be like purely um, joyful experiences. Okay, let's listen to Flight of the Coward from Advance Wars. <laughs> This clearly sounds like some sort of like final boss theme. There's an inherent menace in here. I think there's a couple ways to describe that to you, but like obviously the use of the oh, 
Ooh, that background chorus is one of the ways. And then there are a couple other ways. The electric guitar is really agitated and angsty, and obviously we have this forward propulsion. It paints a picture of an, a, a brutal enemy. I wasn't super crazy about that. It's not a bad piece by any stretch of the imagination, but that didn't cause me to want to headbang. This is a Domineer from Honkai Impact 3rd. With Whip. I personally love that tune, so that was very difficult. I love the mix of, again, this like traditional instrumentation. It deviates from what we would consider standard. Musically, I find it extremely interesting. It's just incredibly unique. We don't hear uh, traditional instruments really ever. And we've had multiple examples here, uh, you know, Eastern and Western now, of music that embraces things from the past, but then also like are written in a way that makes them interesting and unique in a modern time. Incredibly satisfying, uh, especially as a music lover. It's delicious. Next up, another favorite of mine, the twinning. a little bit more subdued but I just oh god that melody line ah it's so hard to not enjoy that the main theme inferno version from fire emblem warriors three hopes okay Oh, 
something you should know about me is I love hearing themes that I've heard before, which I didn't realize I'd heard that before, but this is the the Warriors version. The melody is just so incredibly important, and no matter what you say or think, like, a good melody will take a piece, and, and I love hearing um, something I know modified, whether it's like opera that's turned into jazz, Studio Ghibli songs that I love that have turned into, or turned into like jazz trios. I love that type of stuff. And um, I love hearing like near music set to piano. This particular track, just like, oh my God, that the electric guitar really does sing. And it's something I discovered on this channel is just how fluid and how singable the electric guitar can be sometimes more powerfully than the human voice oftentimes more powerfully i should say and uh yeah that track absolutely slapped that was amazing how are you not gonna headbang to that devil may cry 3 suffer
obviously that defies this sort of idea that I had about headbanger music that it needed to be fast and rhythmically needed to be intense. Now, I wouldn't say that that rhythm wasn't chill. I'm not going to listen to that before bed. Some of you probably do, but it's sort of interesting how this grunge, uh, like very dirty rock reminded me very much of Rage Against the Machine. This music is very, it has a beat pattern. There was no crazy epic drop. It was very sustained. I will say rhythmically it was still fast, but the tempo itself was slow. So the rhythm within the tempo was a pretty upbeat experience. Musically, it was a slow, plotty, come here, I'm gonna find you. Nah, 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 nah. It's interesting how that works and it allows it to work versus anything we've listened to before, which has been much more fast tempo wise and also fast rhythmically. Uh, let's listen to Run by from Deep Rock Galactic. Love that pattern. That's a cool piece. This is another one of those pieces that in context works exceptionally well. It certainly is interesting. It's not dissimilar to the DMC3 song we just listened to where there is this sort of plodding forward momentum that makes us feel some sort of way. I don't dislike it. I don't think that it was quite as head bangy as I was feeling this morning. Duomo Di Sirio, final round from Tekken 7. <laughs>
oh man, I love when tracks do this. This combination of classical with modern instrumentation is just un ungodly to me. It's like one of my favorite things, obviously, because I have so much experience with pure classical music. So to hear something like this, and also Duomo di Cidio just reminds me of Italy, which makes my heart sore. I mean, I, I love this. Uh, it's so much fun and epic chorus and, and organ in here. It's such a nice hodgepodge of classical music meets hard rock, and it's just so incredibly satisfying and it really does make the blood pump. We only have time for one more just because this video is going on really long. Obviously we need to do a part two, yes. Uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, also drop your suggestions in the comments. It's helpful for me and, and we might just do these live because it's, you know, it's more fun to have a communal feeling to it. Rules of nature.
What's most interesting to me about this experiment of listening to these music, the, these pieces of music and headbanging to them and feeling them is that they're all really unique on their own. And I think like that was the most like hard rock that we listened to on, on this particular video. And then also I think one of the first ones to have lyrics, if I recall. And there's just something about the style of singing that obviously metal singing and, and the style is very, very intense. It's grandiose, it's big. Yeah, I, I really dug that. I mean, I mean it, it's, it's loud for a very long time, which is a little bit um, taxing on the old ears. Rose of nature, da, da. It's, yeah, it's cool. Anyway, if you want a part two, let me know in the comments. Feel free to drop your suggestions for other future videos, and maybe we'll do a live stream of these in the future. I'm gonna go get some coffee because I'm ready to, to start my day now. I'm very awake. I'll see you later. Feel free to like, subscribe, and uh, talk to you soon.